Today you're gonna to learn an amazing way to add fake lighting effects to your photos as well as adding manual highlights to make everything look super realistic. This is a ton of fun to create, so let's hop into Photoshop and get started. So to start things off, we need to create a light orb that is gonna represent the light source. Now this can be added over top of an existing light source in the background, or you can add it to the edge of a photo to add a new lighting effect that doesn't already exist. To begin, we need to create a new layer by clicking the new layer icon. Then we'll grab our brush tool by pressing B on on the keyboard and we'll set our foreground color to a nice orangey glow. That's what we want the color of our light to be. I'll click OK. With my brush settings at 100% opacity and a nice soft brush with the hardness at 0%, I'm gonna go and click once in the middle of my photo. I'll then scale down my brush by using the bracket keys and then set my foreground color to a slightly less saturated version of the color we just painted on. I'll once again click on the same layer just inside of our previous color dot. Now we'll go back to the foreground color, lighten it up again, click OK, bring down our brush size a few notches with the bracket keys, add in another dot, and then we'll finally go and add a almost white but not quite white color right in the middle of our orb here, like so. I'll then call this layer to light orb. Now if I grab my move tool by pressing V, we have this little light orb that we can move anywhere in our photo. But for this particular image, I'm going to put it right around here. So about half of it is coming out from around the edge of the frame. Now to make this actually look like a light and not just a colored brush, we need to change the layer blend mode from normal and down here to linear dodge add. Now to make that blend in properly, we'll go to the fill slider, click on that and bring down the fill until we have a nice blended look Something like this looks nice for me. So it looks like there's a clear light source in the center and some nice color bleeding out around that light source. Now let's go and add an adjustment to make it affect our subject. And we can do that using curves and the help of the polygonal lasso tool. To start, I'll go and select my polygonal lasso tool up here in the toolbar. And I'll set my feather to something like 15 pixels for now, but we'll probably adjust this later on. I'll now click just outside of my canvas where the light source started. And I'm gonna go and click up to the top of my subject's head and then down the center of his face. So theoretically, kind of where the light source might be hitting him. I'll then go somewhere like this and then back up to the beginning starting point to create a selection. Now what this is going to do is create a selection that we can now use to add brightness and color to for adding a fake glow effect or a fake light ray, if you will. The best way to do that is by going and clicking the curves adjustment layer and that selection will automatically be applied to the curves layer mask. Now we can go and adjust this curve without worrying about where that adjustment is taking place because the layer mask is already created. So it's going to be going just within the parameters of that selection we made previously. I'll bring up the midtones just a little like so to affect the brightness. And then I'll go and change the color by first going to the blue channel, dragging that down to add a bit of yellow, and then going to the reds to add a bit of red by dragging that curve up a touch like so. The idea here is we wanna to try to replicate the color of our light source. Now at this point, obviously the light looks a little bit too harsh and the edge here is way too defined. So let's go and blur it a bit. With our layer mask selected, we'll go up to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. Then we can increase the blur radius until we're happy with the amount of blur that's around the edges of the selection so that it looks more blended into the overall photo. So this looks good enough for me and I'll click OK. Now with that adjusted, let's go and refine some of the intensities around our subject's face because it probably won't be very intense on his cheek since it's coming from behind his body. To refine it, we'll grab our brush tool by pressing B and make sure that our opacity is set down to something like 30%. So that way we can paint over the light ray without removing the effect completely. With our foreground color set to black, I'll just scale up my brush a little bit, once again using a very soft brush. I'm just gonna go and paint around this area of his face and the front of his hair. I'll then go over his chest a bit because I don't want it to affect too much down there. And that looks much better to me than the initial starting point. So turning that on and off, you can see it's more blended into his face, but we're not done yet. I'd like to have more glow down here around the light source. So I'm gonna change my foreground color to white. I'm gonna bring up my opacity to something like 70%. And now I'll go and paint over this area here. I can bring down the opacity just a little bit again to add a more subtle effect, scale up my brush, and then I'll just paint in like that. And I'll just add a nice glow that fades out a bit better and doesn't have that harsh line across the entire background like we had before. Now this is looking pretty good, but to make it look realistic, we need to add a bit of highlight around our subject's shoulder using the brush tool once again. Before we do that, the process is made much easier when you create a selection of your subject first, and then that way you can just paint onto the edges without worrying about anything else. And the easiest way to do that is by accessing the quick selection tool, 
then going to select subject, but first make sure the cloud option is enabled for a more detailed result. This just does a slightly better job at creating the selection. We'll then choose select subject. Photoshop will do its work and we'll have a nice clean selection of our subject, but it will have sharp edges and the edges of our subject in the photo has slightly blurred edges. So we need to replicate that before we add our brush effects. To feather the selection, just go up to select, modify and feather. Then in this case, I'll set my feather radius to 10 pixels and click okay. Now that my selection is feathered, I'll go and create a new layer and then add a layer mask to that new layer, which will automatically apply that selection to our mask. I'll call this to highlight glow. With the layer thumbnail selected, I'm gonna grab my brush tool by pressing B and I'm gonna set my foreground color to a nice warm orange that we want the highlight color to be. It should match similar to the color of your light source. With a soft brush, I'm gonna to begin to paint around the edges of my subject's shoulder as close to the edges as I can to make it nice and subtle. You can also click between different areas while holding the shift key and that can sometimes be an easier way to add a uniform glow right against the edges if you don't have a steady hand. I'll then continue just up the side of his face like this around his ear. And again, I'm still just holding the shift key and making very small clicks between different areas here to add straight lines between the two clicks and that way we just get a nice consistent highlight. Now, as you can see here, the mask for our shoulder highlight isn't perfect. So we need to adjust that by clicking on our mask, grabbing our brush tool, setting our foreground color to white, and now we can just go and add in that area just by carefully painting over there until everything fits in properly. So that looks pretty good to me right there for our mask update. And now let's go and change the layer blending mode from normal to linear dodge add. And then once again, bring down the fill slider just a bit to help blend that color in a little more naturally. That way we get a bit of brightness around his shoulder and the color is still there, just as if there is a orange light behind him. Now let's go and add a secondary glow. So I'll create a new layer and then hold Alt or Option and click on our original layer mask and click and drag that upwards like so. So now we'll be able to affect our subject without editing anything else. This time we're gonna go and choose a slightly less saturated color like this and click OK. Now we're gonna add this color more into our subject to accentuate the highlight that we just added. I'll set my brush opacity to something like 20% by pressing two on my keyboard. And now I'll go and paint around the edge of my subject like this. You can even go to a even lower opacity like 10% and then continue to click around your subject to add that glow in a little bit more. Now to make that blend in a little bit nicer, we'll set the blending mode from normal down here to hard light, and then we'll change the fill slider down just a little to make it blend in a bit better. And now we'll use the blend if sliders to help it look a little better in the shadows. Double clicking on that layer, that'll open layer styles and we can find the blend if sliders, which we can use the underlying layer slider, hold Alt or option and click on the shadow slider. And that way we can keep the color out of the shadows, but it stays in the highlights and makes things look a little bit more natural. That looks good there, we'll click okay. You could also do the same thing with the highlight glow, once again, holding Alt or option to just blend that in a little bit differently to the edge of your subject click OK. Now turning those two adjustments on and off, you can see the huge difference that that makes to add a nice highlight coming from the light source. Now from there, we just need to go and basically do the same thing that we just did to the edge of his shoulder and go and apply that to other key areas around his body. So in this case, it would be the other side of his shoulder, maybe some points along his collar and his shirt, maybe in his eyebrows and things like that. But you're essentially doing the exact same thing as we just did here. So I'm gonna just continue to add to the existing layers that I have until we have a complete highlight effect for our subject to match the new light source. Since I've already explained everything that I'm about to continue doing, I'm just gonna fast forward until it's all complete. Now one really helpful thing while you're doing this is to constantly change the opacity of your brush. By doing that, you get way more control over how the lighting effects are applied and it can help blend things in a lot better without having to create a ton of new layers. on this and refining it, it will take you quite a bit of time to do this, 
but you end up getting a pretty awesome result turning those two adjustments on and off. You can see the massive difference that that makes to your image and to make this subject actually look like it's being lit by our fake light source. However, there's some of the colors on his body that just aren't matching up with the overall warm tones in our image. So I'm gonna add one extra color grading adjustment to help bring this all together. And this is a worthwhile trick for you to consider as well if your colors just aren't lining up perfectly. To begin, I'll create a new color balance adjustment layer above my two highlight layers. Then I'll hold Alt or Option and click on the layer mask from my previous layers and drag and drop it to my color balance layer. So now all of these adjustments will only be applied to my subject and not the background. Now we can begin to add a little bit of warm and red tones into the picture here. Now, of course, this is changing the color of our brushes, but we can go to the layer mask, grab our brush tool, set our foreground color to white and set our brush to a 100% opacity. And now we can go and paint over the areas that we don't want to affect, AKA all of the areas that we painted over with our brush. So that way we're pretty much only affecting the other half of his body that's in the shadows. Now we'll just go back and touch this up a little bit better just to make it all feel a little bit more natural than what we started with. To finish it off, I'm just using a 30% opacity brush to add a nice subtle transition between our color grading and the highlight. So now turning that on and off, you can see how it just warms up our subject and makes it look a little bit more realistic. And we have now completed our edit. Looking at that before and after, you can see the huge difference that that makes. We've added a fake light source using brushes and the curves adjustment. Then we created a selection of our subject use the brush tool to create two different highlight layers, and then went around our entire subject to add different highlights and subtle highlights, depending on how the light is hitting. Now, this is something that takes a ton of practice, and the easiest way to figure out where to put highlights is just by looking at things in real life. If you look at something in front of the window, for example, see how there's different highlights and shadows on it, and how you can use that as inspiration for the adjustments that you add to your images when you create lighting effects. Now, if you're wanting to learn more about Photoshop and some helpful tips to make you edit better, make sure to download Download my free Photoshop Blueprint ebook down in the description below. It's totally free. All you have to do is sign up to my email list and I'll send it to you right away. If you learned something here, make sure to hit that like button down below and consider subscribing to stay up to date with more tutorials just like today. And again, my name is Brennan from BeWillCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time. See ya.